There's something so fascinating about a green DVD case. Now when I went to CEX, I kind of had a really difficult time finding films that caught my attention and I thought this is, I'm just not feeling it. But then by the end, I managed to get eight DVDs from CEX and one from Poundland and I'm, I'm actually bouncing with excitement to see these. So that was a nice surprise. So I guess we'll start with the one from Poundland. I don't usually buy DVDs from Poundland, but I saw this one and thought, you know what, this sounds amazing. So this is Simon Pegg's Burke and Hare and no, I don't know why I haven't seen this because this is right up my street. I love the story of Burke and Hare and I love Simon Pegg and, and for a pound I think that's going to be an absolute bargain and it has outtakes on it as well which is going to be great. So most of the rest, if I remember rightly, I don't know too much about them but they're films, some of them I've heard of, uh, some of them I just saw on the shelf and thought looks interesting and the first one is in that latter category this is errors of the human body and this is about a struggle to develop a cure for a rare genetic ailment which caused by the death of his infant son geneticist Jeff Burton ooh Burton played by Michael Eklund is forced to relocate in an isolated research facility in Dresden Germany completely resume, consumed by his research Burton is on the brisk of discovery but soon realizes that his own work may bear more consequences than he previously thought. It just sounds really chaotic and I just thought that cover looked gorgeous and I'm hoping it's kind of gory and eerie and I don't have any specific expectations but as long as I like it for 50 pence I think it's okay. This next one I kind of wasn't sure I wanted to buy it but I felt like I should give it a go. This is Paranormal Activity 2. I thought the first one was so boring. The story was dull and monotonous and cliche and it wasn't scary at all. But this one, it looks a little bit darker. But th the reason I wanted to watch this was because everybody loves it. And I thought, well, it must be doing something right. Why aren't I feeling any connection to it? Or at least the first one. So if I don't like this second one, I will not watch any of the ones that followed it. But I am prepared to give the second one a go in the hope that they may be improved on what I feel they got wrong in the first one. The Spiderwick Chronicles is one that a lot of people praise and, and they say everybody has to watch it. To be honest, if it wasn't for the fact that Freddie Highmore is in this, and I think Freddie Highmore is great, especially when he was this adorable little child, I probably wouldn't have bought it. But it looks fun, it looks like one of those films that I can just shove on when I'm not in the mood to pay attention uh, and, and just enjoy a nice magical tale. So if you've seen it, let me know what you think. This one. I hadn't heard of. This is two of my favourite comedy actors, Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell, and this was mentioned when I did a live stream a couple of weeks ago, and it was it was potentially a contender for the McMovie Club, but it didn't make the cut, so I, I bought it. It's the other guys, and I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Never let it be said that I don't love Amy Poehler. I'm so obsessed with her just now, it's just painful. Blades of Glory. Obviously, she's not our main protagonist in this, but uh, I, I think it's still going to be a really strong film. Um, I, mean, I know a lot of people really like Blades of Gor Glory. Blades of Glory? Kind of could be an interesting parody. But it's not one that I'd ever seen for some bizarre reason. So I'm very excited and I just love Amy Poehler. Here we have another one that I don't remember having heard of. Even though I kind of feel like I should have done this as White Noise. And this is Michael Keaton. I love Michael Keaton, so that was definitely a, a, a giant pull factor for me there. And um, it's about contacting the dead and everything going wrong and it just, oh, it sounds wonderful. Another one that causes me to droop my head in shame for having not seen it is Bewitched. I think the reason I haven't seen this is because so many people do praise this film so much that I'm guess, I guess I'm just a bit, a bit nervous that it doesn't live up to these expectations that I now have for it but it just kind of like uh, Spiderwick I feel like for me it'll be one of those films that'll be nice and cosy and doesn't really need too much attention paid to it so uh, I'm going to save this for when I'm a little bit tired but wanting a little bit of a pick-me-up and lastly we have the magical green one this is of course the Green Lantern and I'm trying, trying to get a a greater feel for a lot of the DC characters that I've not yet explored. This is the head of Justice League, uh, about which I am very excited. So I hope I like this. I kind of feel I will, but I need to make sure that I'm in the right mood to watch this 
because I think I've watched some superhero films previously where I've maybe not been in the right frame of mind for it and have then not enjoyed it as much as possible. And what does the disc look like? Eh, the disc's just a little bit average. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that a lot. So, as I said, initially it was a really bad shopping trip because I just couldn't find anything. But in the end, I think I managed to get to get nine really pretty exciting films. If you've seen any of these, let me know what you think of them. Any film reje rejections? Suggestions for me? Uh, let me know. Uh, I am always willing to hear them and I'll speak to you all next time. Bye!